Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Bless the holy name, Jesus. Bless the holy name, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, Father. Praise you, Lord, the Holy Ghost. the second Sunday of Advent and very soon we are going to celebrate Christmas. Now brothers and sisters, why do we celebrate Christmas? Can anyone tell me why do we celebrate Christmas? Birth of Jesus. Okay. We celebrate Christmas because it is the birth of Jesus. Definitely, Christmas means the birth of Jesus, right? But why do we celebrate Christmas? Because the Archangel Gabriel said that the birth of Jesus Christ is good news, right? Because Archangel Gabriel said the birth of Jesus is good news. And good news is meant to be celebrated, no? Whenever we receive good news, what do we do? We celebrate. So that is why we celebrate Christmas. In fact, Archangel Gabriel said the news about the birth of Jesus would cause great joy for all the people and the joyful celebration would be universal. And Jesus Christ came to redeem all mankind who believes in Him. As we have heard in today's uh, first reading from the, what was the first reading today? Prophet Isaiah. As Prophet Isaiah told in his prophecy before Jesus Christ was born more than 4,000 years ago. It's about 2,000 years approximately, not exactly, about 2000 years ago that Jesus Christ our Lord was born and the uh, prophecy of Isaiah was about uh, about 4000 years ago so according to the prophecy of prophet Isaiah so Jesus Christ would be born after about 2000 years ago and then we have heard in the second reading that uh, Saint Peter in his second letter tells us that for God a day is about a thousand years. So we don't know, but he says that for God a day could mean about a thousand years. So, brothers and sisters, so then the prophecy to come true, it um, took about two thousand years. So, for God a day could mean about a thousand years. That's what Saint Peter would reckon. Now, only when we die and after we die would we know what exactly and how it would work for God. So, brothers and sisters, now coming back to Christmas, the three titles that the Archangel applied to Jesus are important. Now, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, he says, Jesus is the human Messiah who came to fulfill the law and the prophets. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for... He will save this people from their sins. This will show that God is faithful. Now we are told in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the other prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. So brothers and sisters, here we say in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 that it says that Jesus has come not to abolish the law and the prophets but he's come to fulfill the law and the prophets now many a time we find people telling us many a times now new age preachers telling us do not go to the old testament why do you need the old testament read from the new testament the old testament is obsolete now brothers and sisters when uh, saint jerome put the bible together he he put the old testament as well as the New Testament together because he saw that the Old Testament was very important along with the New Testament and he it made a lot of sense when we read the New Testament because Jesus says I did not come to abolish the law and the prophets but I came to fulfill it. Brothers and sisters now Jesus he is the divine Lord who has entered our world the Almighty God who took on human flesh God and man have been fused together in the eternal world. God is truly with us as we are told about this in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Look, the virgin shall conceive 
and bear a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, brothers and sisters, in celebrating Christmas, we celebrate the Christ in whom all of God's promises are yes and amen, as Saint Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For in Him, every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through Him that we say the amen. The glory of God. Now, brothers and sisters, now let us look at some of the traditions of Christmas that we celebrate. Now, are they, let us see if they are biblical. Many of the things that we do for Christmas, like for example, uh, first of all, now exchanging gifts. You must have seen like in foreign countries, I don't know about here, but uh, in many foreign countries and even here, like in our family here, especially in Bluebell, we had this tradition of exchanging gifts. I don't know about your families or how you all do. But uh, most of the families, it's a, Christ, uh, it's a Christmas tradition to exchange gifts for Christmas. Now, is this a biblical tradition or not? Let us see in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. So we find that in 2 Corinthians, St. Paul tells us, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Now we find that it is written in the Bible that uh, this exchanging of gifts for Christmas because God himself gave us a gift. God himself gave us a gift and that was his son on Christmas day. And that is how this tradition of gifts, giving of gifts or exchanging of gifts with your loved ones started on Christmas day. And that is why we give gifts to our loved ones. Maybe between our spouses, husband and wife, or to our children, or to our brothers and sisters. Now, brothers and sisters, why do we celebrate Christmas? By stringing lights. Why do we put lights on Christmas? Now, especially we find everywhere you go, people selling lights and people, um, some will, uh, like if you go, especially in foreign countries, we here, we wait for the 24th, many people will wait for the 24th or the 23rd maybe. But if you go in foreign countries, they will start uh, on Advent. On the first Sunday of Advent itself, people will start putting the lights. And especially we also wish to do it, but now we don't have time. So mostly we, this year we have not yet put. I don't know, we all, I always wait for my wife to do it, you know, even though I'm the man. But now because my back and all that, I don't. And even otherwise, I used to always wait for her to take the initiative. But uh, you see that uh, here in Goa, like most people will always do it on the 24th. But uh, in foreign countries, they always do it on the first Sunday of Advent, which is the right way to do it. Now, why do we celebrate Christmas by stringing lights? Now, we are told in John chapter 1, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. So if we are told, in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. And that is why we celebrate by putting the lights for Christmas. Because Jesus was the light of this world. Now why do we celebrate Christmas with carols and choirs? Now why do we celebrate Christmas with carols and choirs? Is this also biblical? Because they are expressive or expressions of joy and follow the examples of Mama Mary and Zacharias as well as Simeon and the angels, all of whom praise the Lord in poetry. In Luke chapter 1 verse 2. Just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. As we know that as soon as the word came from the archangel Gabriel to Mama Mary, she sang the Magnificat. The Magnificat. Then when uh, Zacharias heard, he expressed, when, as soon as he heard, he expressed his praise. When Simeon saw the child Jesus, he expressed his praise. When the angels, the choirs of angels, 
They sang the Gloria. They sang the Gloria and all praise the Lord. So all of them sang, sang poetry, and that is why we sing the carols. And as uh, as in choirs, we sing the carols, and that is why we have the carols, and we sing all the carols. So it is biblical. Now, let us why do we celebrate Christmas? By decorating evergreen trees, which we call Christmas trees with stars and decorations. Because of the eternal life that Jesus brings, as we are told in Genesis chapter 2 9, where the tree represents a new life, an everlasting life. Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So you see that God made every kind of tree and every kind of green tree. That is why we put the Christmas tree. And Jesus is this eternal tree, the tree of life. And that is why we celebrate Christmas by putting the Christmas tree as we are called. As we are, as we call it, and in John chapter ten, verse twenty-eight, we are told, "I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand." So, brothers and sisters, Jesus is this eternal life. That is one more example. In other words, when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the love and compassion of God for all humankind. Jesus is his eternal life. Jesus is the tree of eternal life. And Jesus says, we know, come and eat of me and you should never die again. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve fell down. They went down dragging all of humanity with them into the darkness and death of sin. What did God do? He did not tell us to find our own way out of the mess we were in. No, he came down to where we were and he saved us. This is what Christmas is all about. It is about a God rescuing us and delivering us from sure death. It is about a God who came in search of us. Ours is the only God who came for us. If you look about all the religions that are there in the humankind, Jesus is the only God. <coughs> Jesus Christ is the only God rather who came in search of humankind. Whereas all the other so-called gods which are there, which are not real gods, or maybe they are gods for the other people, but <clears throat> these so-called gods never came, but these people went in search of the so-called gods. As you will find that people went in uh, caves, or in high places, in the mountains, in the snow, and in, um, in harsh conditions, and many of them died searching for so-called gods, spirits or whatever. But ours is a God who came in search of us in humankind. He did not leave us. Even though humankind sinned and went away from God and did not have the face to look up back at Him, He came back searching for us. He said, never mind, you sin. Come back, come back to me, I'll come here now. Come, do not look down, look up. And he opened his hands, and there he is. He opened his hands and said, this is how much I love you. So brothers and sisters, Christmas is all about that. It is about a God who came to rescue us. He came down from heaven to save us. Now brothers and sisters, now is there any biblical evidence that Jesus is born on 25th of Christ on 25th of December. Now most scholars are unsure about the true date of Christ, uh, Christ's birth being on the on 25th of December. Now one of the things that go against uh, 25th of December as being the date of Christmas is that 25th of December is very cold in. Uh, in uh, Israel, it's a time of winter, and uh, you know, if you go to Israel, they say the shepherds would not be out on 25th of December, being very, very cold, and it would be impossible for the shepherd 
to be out with their ship as the Bible, Holy Bible says. So it would not have been on 25th of December. And uh, as per private revelations given to me by the Holy Spirit, the date is most probably on uh, 26th of August. Now, the thing is, why was 25th December made to be Christmas Day? Now, this is the reasoning how it happened. I mean, this is how it happened. In the 4th century, 4th century, the church bishops in Rome, they had a specific reason for doing so. Having turned long ago from worshipping the one true God, creator of all things, many early cultures, you know that there were many early cultures in the Roman Empire, and they were worshipping the sun god. They, they, they used to worship something called the sun god. They used to worship the sun. And they used to call it the sun god, the Romans. They had feasts in the winter season in December, when the days were the shortest. In December, it used to be very cold, and the days were the shortest in December. It was peak uh, winter time. As part of their festivals, they built bonfires. They used to build bonfires. And they used to think that uh, the bonfires would give the sun god strength to bring him back to life again. And when the days used to become longer, there would be great rejoicing and festivity. So when the days would become, become, uh, become longer, that would be uh, springtime. After uh, winter would be springtime. Now the church leaders in Rome decided to celebrate Jesus' birth in winter season in an attempt to Christianize the popular pagan celebrations. Now the church leaders wanted to convert the pagans to Christianity, to bring See, there were so many pagans there, and there was a large population of pagans in Europe. So they wanted to convert most of these people to Christianity. So what they did was they wanted to bring all these people to Christianity. So the festival of this sun god, on the same day, which was on 25th of December, they brought them, they converted them to Christianity, and they turned that day into the birth of Jesus. So, they made 25th December into the date of uh, the birthday of Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, regardless of the pagan background of December celebrations, whether Jesus was truly born on the 25th of December or not, our goal is to still to turn the eyes of all men upon the true Creator, our Lord, our Lord and God, whom we celebrate on the 25th of December. The light has come into the whole world, and Christmas presents the church and each and every one of us with a wonderful opportunity to preach the good news that each and every one of us should turn towards righteousness. Now in the Gospel of Luke chapter 3 verses 4 to 6, St. John the Baptist tells us, As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of a crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the, crook, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 8 he says, Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Now, brothers and sisters, let us not take the love of God for granted, thinking that we can continuously sin, go confession, and then sin again. That is what has become a habit for many people. They go for confession, sin again, go for confession, sin again. Remember the golden words of Jesus to the woman caught in adultery in John 8, chapter, chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. What does Jesus say? Has no one condemned you? Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and from now on do not say sin again. Jesus does not say from now on go your own way. Jesus does not say go your own way. He says go your own way from now on do not sin again. In the entire Bible, brothers and sisters, if you read the entire Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say go and that's it. Go your own way. 
it always says go and do not sin again. Now there are so many people, there are so many retreat centers. If you see also so many on YouTube or maybe on uh, banners on, on the roads or anywhere, it says God is love and mercy, God is love and mercy. And these people are preaching you all this, all this rubbish, complete rubbish, God is love and mercy. And people are falling for this, you know, and people are going after this kind of preachers because they love this thing, this thing called love and mercy. Because why? They do not want to stop their sin of theirs. They want to sin, they want to be continued in this sin. And guess what is going to happen? That preacher of yours and you are both going to go to hell. When you die, when he dies, that preacher of yours is going to die. And when you die, both of you are going to hell. Because St. Paul tells us in the Holy Bible, St. Paul tells you that in the, later year, in the later times, people are going to choose for themselves preachers which suit their ears. Preachers which suit their ears. Preachers which teach them doctrines which are not sound. Preachers which are going to teach them, who teach them unsound doctrines. The preachers who teach them unsound doctrines which are pleasing to their ears. People who are going to teach them unsound doctrine which are pleasing to their ears. And people are going to love them. And people are going to like them. Why? Because they are teaching them unsound doctrine which they are going to love. And these people are going to lead them to hell. So, brothers and sisters, you have to be careful about them. And many people love these people. Why? Because they do not teach them repentance. And they do not teach them. And this, this kind of people who go to them, they are not interested in picking up the Bible and seeing what the Bible teaches them. Why? Because they are scared they might find something in the Bible that teaches something else rather than what a preacher is telling them. Because they are scared. They know that what that person might be telling them might be wrong. Because they know they have one side of the brain, the fear that they might be going to hell after all. So their only concern is about making to this life. So brothers and sisters, this is what is going on in this world. But I'm going to share with you how what happened with us during the beginning of our ministry in the year 2016. There was a, this woman who came to us and she was having a very difficult time with her son. He was breaking all the things in the house and he was, he was going, I don't know, he was just breaking everything in the house and locking himself up in the room and all kinds of things. And there was no one able to help her. She had been to all the retreat centers and to all the preachers and to everyone. And then she came to us. And we were able to help her and to solve her problem. And then she was sharing with us how she had been to everyone. And then she was telling her that in a local church that there was this woman who was a Eucharistic minister. And uh, she was telling her that when nobody was able to help her before us, that uh, she told her that there was one uh, person, a witch, who had come from our station and he was staying in some hotel in uh, Margao and uh, she advised her to go to him. You know, a witch, no? In Konkani you call them gadis. So she told him to go to him and he will tell you, solve your problem and this and that and whatever. And so she, this woman told her, but is that not a sin? She said, no, after that you go for, you solve your problem and then you go for confession, no? So she telling you, you go to him and after that you go for confession. <clears throat> so this is how they are telling and she is a person who is a Eucharistic and she say every day, body of Christ. <coughs> and she is holding the body of Christ, this kind of a person. And this is the kind of advice she is giving him. And where this, where this kind of a person will land? 
Brothers and sisters, in the book of Hebrews, in the Holy Bible, chapter 10, verse 26 to 27 tells us, For if we willfully persist in sin, after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. So what does it tell us? For if we willfully persist in sin, after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. So brothers and sisters, when you know willfully if you persist in sin, and if you go for confession, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Means there no longer remains a absolution for your sin. There is no absolution for sin, but you are marked directly for hell. Because our God is a God of justice and righteousness. Our God is a God of justice and righteousness. There no longer remains an absolution for you. Remember that. Many of people think about these things. Many people think they are very smart. You know, in, um, in their business buildings and all that, they do all this cheating and everything. And they think they can do the same thing with God. Don't think it is God who made you, it is the God who gave you the brains. Don't think that you are smarter than God. You might be able to fool somebody, you might be able to fool a person, you might be able to fool a religious person, a preacher or somebody, but don't think you can fool God. So Francis, anyway, coming back to the topic about Christmas. So Christmas is a day we celebrate in feasting and rightly so since it is a big occasion for all of us. Since we celebrate, we have to do, we have to also remember the spiritual side of Christmas. Don't only think about making all that uh, meats and everything. Many people do <coughs> only think about that, but only also think about the spiritual side of Christmas, like praying. Don't only think about going for mass and obligation, wearing the women especially, wearing their shortest dresses, open dresses, Try to wear, many of them will throw their rosaries and their scapulars, remove them and throw them. After the mass we will see them. Or maybe the, after the drunkenness is gone, women are not less drinking and all that. After the hangover is gone, then they will wear. After 2-3 two, two, days, then the rosary scapulars will come back. But when they are going with all those dresses, the rosary scapulars remove and throw them out. Many people, do, they don't want to all that. Why the photographs have become nice? The rosary and the scapula spoil the photographs. <clears throat> Another thing, don't forget about the poor and the downtrodden on Christmas Day. As Saint John, James tells in chapter 1 verse 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. And as we get together on uh, Christmas Day with our family, don't remember the part of prayer, especially the prayer of the Rosary. Remembering the Theotokos. Theotokos, which means the Mother of God, the Holy Mother of God. Now, brothers and sisters, remember Christmas is a reminder of the cross of Christ. As a Christian, all of us are called to carry the cross of Christ and accept His will in our lives. Just like Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Take this cup from me, not my will, let your will be done. Let us make a commitment this Christmas to accept this will of God in our lives. I'd also like to remind you of another thing. <clears throat> On this Christmas, especially in this Christmas season, a lot of people get married. If you will see that all these other religions, when a lot of people get married in these other religions, when they will bring you their wedding card, you will always see their religious symbol on their wedding cards. Whatever religions they are, Hindus, Muslims, you will always see their religious symbol. But our religion, they are embarrassed, embarrassed to put our symbol of our religion on our wedding cards. What is the symbol of our religion? Do you see anyone putting the symbol of our religion? Nobody puts the symbol of our religion. Why? Because those people will tell, why are you putting that? Nobody puts that. 
But yet then some when some danger or some problem is coming immediately. Immediately do this. I was watching yesterday on the video on YouTube about plane crashes. And there are three people in the, in the cockpit. One uh, earlier, this is an old one. And there is a pilot and a co-pilot and a flight engineer. And the plane is about to crash and the flight engineer and the co-pilot and the pilot is trying to control. And the two fellows, they are, they are both of them, sign of the cross and they are praying. So only when they are in a dangerous situation, then the sign of the cross. Otherwise, cross is gone to hell. See the other religions, their symbol of the religion is first on top, then the wedding card. But in our religion, nobody is interested. They are names first, the surnames and whatnot, heart and this and that and whatever sign of uh, infinity and this and the God knows in between the person will die, divorce and whatever but they don't think about all that infinity, heart, love and after some time hate, divorce, death, whatever if God is not with you, who, who else will be with you? The devil let the cross of Christ, these Christian princesses remind us that all of us have come from God in heaven and that God awaits the safe arrival of each and every one of us back into heaven. After our journey, pilgrimage here on this earth is done. But the way we are here and the way we are living our lives, may God have mercy on us. Amen. 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 Amen.